This is DMG and welcome to the very first episode of Mini Magic. We're going to talk about the tools and materials that we're going to add on to the existing to tools and materials in order to create your own minis. All right, so if you haven't seen video one of the main series, go back and have a look at that. That has all the cardboard and matchsticks and hot glue gun and white glue and all that kind of stuff, paints, etc. So have a look at that. Uh, this is going to be additional materials and tools. So um, one of the main things we're gonna start with is a nice box of washers. So these are one inch or two and a half centimeter wide washers. Um, I prefer the ones that have a little eyelet in the middle, so it, it's a, a, a larger eyelet. Um, and that's if you want to start doing things like putting magnets in there to magnetize onto for storage, or if you're going to play on a magnetized surface, you can place uh, one of the rare earth magnets in there um, at the base of the mini and that will stick on. It's also that's nice and heavy, so weight will hold the, the, the mini up. So washers. Uh, next thing to consider is wire. So this is a um, quite a thin gauge wire. This is about one millimeter in thickness. Um, relatively inexpensive. I think I paid two dollars fifty for that. Uh, and then for the wire, uh, just some wire cutters. So just basic wire cutters. You probably have a pair of pliers that has a cutter at the back. So th this is a wire cutter itself, but some pairs of pliers have it at the back. So if you've got a pair of pliers, you probably already have a wire cutter. So look for that. Um, not super important, but if you've got a pair of pliers, if you have a needle nose pair of pliers, th this is better only because if you're just gonna wrap and bend things, um, it's nice to bend it around the needle nose pliers and it's nicer for smaller details. Um, but yeah, just a standard pair of pliers will work just as well. Um, a, a rather large screwdriver only to create coils of the wire. So a, a nice large screwdriver. Um, so not all of the stuff is going to be created from wire. These are just some of the things that we'll use and there will be different techniques that we'll go through during all of the different videos. So if you see one technique, there's probably going to be a second technique on how to do something. So don't think that's the be all and end all of how this works. All right. So uh, on top of the wire, we're also gonna have um, some synthetic rope. Uh, this is just, uh, I think it's a nylon cord rope. Um, you can see that this you know, breaks up into quite thin little bits and pieces. And we'll use that for a variety of um, stiff hair sort of looks and things like that. Also add to that um, standard twine string um, this is about three to four millimeters in thickness. Again, this, when broken up, can be used for a variety of things like hair and also um, ropes and garments and things like that. So we'll be using some of that too. A nice big bag of beads. Now we have seen this in my videos before. This was like a dollar fifty, I think. I got this at the dollar store. Why right, does a dollar fifty to dollar store? I don't know, but anyway. There's a variety of different size of beads, so it's not just all one size, they're all different sizes. Uh, the important thing is obviously the beads that have holes in them, so that you normally would thread these onto, you know, jewelry or something like that uh, for kids. Uh, the hole is important, and uh, we'll get to that. Um, but yeah, a nice big bag of beads. You, you will probably never use all of these, but they're nice to have for a variety of different purposes. Masking tape. So I've started using this in my other videos, but so masking tape, uh, this is about uh, one to one and a half centimeters wide. That's a decent sort of size. You can get much wider ones, uh, but this is nice in terms of the things we're gonna be working with. There's a nice uh, thinner gauge. Onto that, we're gonna add ping pong balls, table tennis balls. Uh, have a use, uh, I use them for my uh, cauldron video, um, but there's a variety of other uses that we can use them for as well, and we'll see that as we progress through the series. Uh, 
plastic, just bits of plastic. So these are plastic lids. Uh, this will be used for cutting out things like weapons and that kind of stuff because it's nice and stiff. So it's not like cardboard. Uh, it's a little bit easier to paint if you're going to use mini paints and that sort of stuff. So just some throwaway sort of plastic stuff. Uh, drinking straws. So a nice, uh, a nice collection of drinking straws. Um, what's really good is if you get the bendy kind. So usually you can buy these in huge packs for 50 cents. Um, and uh, it doesn't matter what color they are because you'll paint over them. So this can be used for a variety of other things as well. So if you're going to do modern or science fiction or something, um, it's great for you for doing pipes and things like that. So this is a great thing to add to your materials. Uh, another thing that I just scrounged, this is a huge thing of buttons. So uh, buttons would be great for trays, shields, any kind of round sort of interesting shapes. Uh, uh, um, heraldries, sort of shields and things like that on walls, um, platters, all that kind of stuff. Um, so if you scratch around someone in your family somewhere, grandma or, you know, great grandmother or even a younger sibling may have uh, buttons lying around. Or if you just scratch around your cupboard, you'll probably find a whole bunch. So we're also going to, I'm going to experiment with this is cling wrap or glad wrap as it's commonly called in some countries. Um, this is a, 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 a thin the thing that you wrap your sandwiches in. So, uh, well, yeah, there's a variety of things. <laughs> Choke myself to death. Um, and uh, yeah, that will hopefully be quite useful. So we'll start using that. Then one of my favorite things, tin foil. So again, we're gonna use that quite a lot. This wasn't in my original video, but very, very useful. And of course, this is what we call uh, baking paper or baking parchment as it may be called in the States or possibly in the UK as well. This is a, a, like a grease paper that you bake on. You've seen me use it uh, with hot glue so the hot glue doesn't stick to it. So this, um, this is very useful just for laying underneath when we're doing work. Uh, very cheap, so probably $2 for a 10 meter roll of the stuff. And finally, we're going to introduce a, another piece of equipment, and that is a soldering iron. Well, I, it may be in the States called a soldering gun. I'm not sure, but a soldering iron is what we call it. So I got this in the garage sale for a buck. Um, I have seen it at a hardware store for around five or six dollars. Uh, you don't need anything fancy. You just need something simple. Uh, if you can get one that's got a little stand, you can probably buy the stand on eBay for three or four dollars. Um, and it's got a little um, piece of foam in there that you wet so that you can clean the nib of this. Um, so we're going to use that. And along with that, you're going to need to get some solder. So solder, I think this was about $4 for this roll. Um, and th this is quite a thick one. So get a, get a thicker one. Um, and we're going to use that uh, for when we do armatures and things like that. Uh, we will also use this as a wood burning tool. So uh, there are a variety of things you could use this for. Now, of course, as I said, I'm going to do alternatives. So if I do one thing one way, I'm gonna try and do it another way. So you don't necessarily need to have this, but it, uh, you know, most of my channel is about things that you have lying around your house, but um, these are quite useful. So consider that. Um, or just wait a few videos and see if it's something you'd want to invest in, you can make a decision then. Obviously, hot glue gun is one of the basic requirements. On the topic of, of, of soldering and, and that kind of thing, um, I have a respiratory asthma problem, um, and some of the kind of sulfur stench that comes off the solder, um, I find it's better to have some sort of respirator. Um, depends on you, uh, if you're a well ventilated area or something, you may want to consider this as purely from a safety slash health perspective. And then you can also get safety goggles or just a pair of sunglasses or something to wear while you're using it. So that's purely safety and health. Um, because soldering irons can get very hot. I uh, wouldn't go waving them around at people. I do, but that's just me. All right, so that's episode one. So episode two, we're going to start looking at 
how are we going to start building up the structure of a mini, uh, the variety of different, this is going to be uh, not only um, armature base, there's be posable and there's also be modular as well. So armature is one that just stands as is and then you get a posable one where you can actually you know, repose the mizzy, the, the, the mizzy, the mizzy, the mini, how you would like it to do, so that you get a little bit more flexibility in that. And then modular one, so if you want to make 10 guys very quickly, you've already created a whole bunch of heads, a whole bunch of arms, a whole bunch of legs and feet and whatever and whatnot. And you can just stick them all together and you've got a whole rack of weapons. So that's the whole process. We're going to go through that. Um, and uh, I will see you in the next video. Now, if you like this video, you click the like button consider sharing it with your friends. You can also check out my Facebook page and the website, thedmg.info, where you can find a link to my email newsletter. And there's, of course, the store where you can purchase PDFs and DVDs and printable booklets and things to help support this channel. Thank you very much, and see you next time.